Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Lisa Pizik Show. You know that I like to give you all the goods in a short amount of time so you can go and make changes in your business and in your life. I talk a lot about mindset and not so much a mindset shift, but a mindset tilt that helps you look at things a different way. Because the worst thing we want is to be out of alignment in our business and we're hustling for the wrong reason or we're not making the best decisions in our business and in our life that bring us the most impact and income. And that's why today I wanna briefly chat with you about feelings. People love to throw around our feelings when it comes to our vision and our mission and our vision boards and our goal setting and goal planning and what do we wanna feel and how do we wanna feel at the end of that launch or that finish line. And that feminine side in business teaches us to really use our feelings to decide what the next best step for us is and I'm gonna play devil's advocate on that today. I'm gonna argue with that today that there are some times when I believe feelings are great to use as a marker in business and there are times when I think our feelings don't matter and our feelings are not serving us the way that it should in business. So let me start with the easy one and say here's where I think you should use feelings when making decisions in your business. I think that instead of a goal that we want to achieve or a vision board that we set, and, and I've seen that. People do workshops about vision board planning in January and writing out your 10-year plan, and all of that is really helpful. But I think we get stuck on the to-dos, and we get stuck on a, a status or a title or an accomplishment not the feeling that that accomplishment is going to bring. So the only time that I believe feelings play a significant factor when it comes to our business and our life is when we set a goal. Why do we want to achieve that? What feeling do we want to have? I can remember my very first mastermind event with Brendan Burchard. I was sitting at a table next to a New York Times best-selling author. And I was like, oh my God, I want to be a best-selling author. Congratulations. Can you tell me a bit about that? What was that like? What did that bring for you? And his first question to me was, why? Why do you want to be a best-selling author? And I'm like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I never really thought about it. It's just to me, a best-selling author means that your book got in a lot of people's hands and you're making impact and you're serving people. And you're making a difference in this world. And he said to me, do you need to be a best-selling author to do that? And I'm like, mm, no, I guess not. And he said, you know, that's about a 10 to 12K process to become a New York Times best-selling author. And at the time, which was two years ago, that was a lot, a lot, a lot of money to me. And I was like, oh my God, it's not going to cost me 15K to be a best-selling author. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's the process he's telling me. And that opened up my eyes that it's not the fact that I want to be a best-selling author. It's that I want to make a huge impact with my voice and my message and my story. And I want to, that legacy piece, I want to be in people's homes, a book on the shelf, right? For some of you like me that are nerdy and love personal development, you like covet that bookshelf in your house of all your amazing books. Like I want to be on that bookshelf in people's house. I want to feel significant. I want to know that I'm leaving that legacy. I want to feel proud of the work that I put out. So that has nothing to do with being a best-selling author. Right? I want to be a TED speaker is another one a lot of people say. Are you tied to the fact that it's TED? or TEDx, or you want your message to go viral. You want people to have access to your message 24 seven. You want that feeling of, I did it, baby. I made it big. Those I think are more 
actionable goals that you can allow feelings to guide you with. And if that leads you to a bestseller or a TED talk, then awesome. Because the problem with feelings and how it trips us up is if we don't get then that New York Times bestseller or that TED talk, we feel less than. I can't tell you how many times people say to me, Lisa, I launched my program and I only got three people. And I'm like, only? That's three lives that you've changed. That's three people that might give you the best testimonial ever that's going to later be used in a launch where you're going to have 3,000 people. That may be a testimonial you use that you sell from stage and you do a $300,000 launch. So you can never discount that number. That launch can still be successful with three people. So that's where I think feelings can trip us up. And the other two ways, so that last way that I had written down, I was gonna get to that later, but I kind of cut right to the chase, was we feel like it's not a winner, right? That I only launched, you know, and three people bought it. It's not a winner. You don't know what impact and what ripple effect that's gonna have on those three people. So I challenge you to get away from that number or vice versa. People say, I have, I have 10,000 followers on Instagram. And I'm like, great, how many of those 10,000 people buy when you put out an offer? Because if you have 10,000 fans that never invest, I don't care about your 10K. I'd rather have 100 people and all 100 people buy. So you can't use your feelings to judge whether something is a winner or not. Now, what about feelings on your audience faces when you are speaking, when you are hosting workshops, when you were on video, when you're doing a summit interview, when you're physically in front of people or you can see that reaction, that's actually, feelings are not a good judge of that. Sometimes we go, whoa, that was a tough crowd. And I know that happened for me when I first started sharing my signature story in business. And I was like, it's not the winner. It's not a winner because people aren't laughing. People aren't cheering. People aren't standing up and applauding. You know, as speakers, we want this feedback. And that's so wrong because the best speakers and the best thought leaders challenge people how to think. And when you're delivering information and it's hitting home for people, they might not necessarily be evoking an emotion or a response on their face because they're going inside themselves and they're thinking about their own life, their own business, their own relationships, their own health their own pain, their own suffering, their own aspirations, their own visions. So they might be going on this whole inward journey, which is where you want them. That's exactly where you want them. So I can remember going back to my mentor, Bo Eason, and saying, it's not the right story because I'm not getting any reaction out of people. And he's like, is the story converting? Yes. Then it's the right story. Go by what the data and the numbers tell you and where those numbers lead you as opposed to the look on people's faces. Because if they're maybe applauding and cheering and clapping, and they, that might not mean a sale. That might mean they really like you, but do they wanna do business with you? That's another story. When you challenge them how to think, when you challenge them to go inward, that's sometimes when people are not saying nothing and they're walking up to you in the back of the room going, how can I invest with you? How can I work with you? They're ready because they've done that work inward. So don't go by the feelings on people's face. And then the last way that you get tripped up with your feelings is there are days when you don't want to. And I've been in a lot of mastermind groups and women entrepreneurial groups and just a lot of groups where that topic of motivation comes around a lot and people say, I don't feel, I, I don't want to, I don't want it today. I don't feel motivated. How do you guys handle that? And to be honest, I don't really struggle with that. And I know you're probably ready to like turn the station or if you had 
something in your hand and we were here, you would throw your milkshake on me. I know, right? I'm one of those nerds that doesn't ever lose motivation. I don't, I lose energy sometimes when I push myself too hard and I know that I got to go back to self-care, but I don't ever lose motivation. I don't have those days where I don't feel like it. And the reason why is because I set the intention before I do anything. Two questions I always ask myself, what is the intention and what is the end game? What do I want out of this? How do I want to serve people, others? What's the intention and what's the end game? Me. And when I have those nailed and those crystal clear, it lights a fire under my butt because I know I'm serving myself and I know I'm serving others. And I'm always tied to that, what Brendan Burchard calls necessity. I'm always tied to that necessity. I don't just do things for the sake of doing it. I don't do to-dos to make me feel better. I don't create programs because someone else said that I should. I don't do podcasts because it's a cool thing to do. I do it because I want to inspire you. I want to challenge you. I want to get you to move. I want you to show up in your business. I want you to show up in the world bigger. So on those days when you're like not feeling it or you're not sure, ask yourself, what is the intention and what is the end game? And you may be doing things on your to-do list that you shouldn't be doing, that you can delegate to other people. I even say, when I'm gardening, what is the intention? I want to feel happy in my space when I sip my morning coffee. What is the end game? This physical movement and this fresh air is good for me. There are days where I might be like, gardening ain't my priority. What is the intention? I don't need to garden. I need to go get on that sales call. What is the end game? I need to make some money and serve some people so that gardening can wait. So those questions can be applied to your business, to your life, to anywhere. You got to ask those questions when you're not feeling it. So there are times when you can use feelings and they're great. Visualization. There are times when feelings trip you up when you use that, if it's a winner or not, the look on people's faces and when he ain't feeling it. So hopefully I've armed you with some questions and some thoughts and some processes to look at when you're putting your content out into the world. Now, if you're not sure what those necessary processes are. You don't know what your intentions are. You don't know what your end game is. That's when you want to hop on a free 15 minute strategy session with Eric and I, I'm going to hold you to 15 minutes like this podcast was, because as you can see, you can get a lot done and hammered out in 15 minutes when you're intentional. And that's what I want for you to bring more intention into your business. So you go to www.lisapizik.com. At the bottom of every page, you can click in and book a strategy call. And that's what I want you to do. Thank you for tuning in to the Lisa Pizik Show. As always, I'm so honored to be your host and to be able to just share these best practices and these little mindset tilts with you. And that can rewrite your whole week, your whole month, your whole year by tuning in and taking action. So thanks for co-creating and being in this with me. And I'll see you next time on the Lisa Pizik Show.